ultimately, the, the students who are very strong candidates for MD-PhD programs are those who know that they just love research and they've done a ton of research and they have usually found something that they want to research already. And it's not just, ooh, I like research and want to integrate this into my practice because you can do that as an MD. Ask Dr. Gray pre-med Q&A. Welcome to the show. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm excited to chat with you and hopefully answer your question or questions and, and hopefully get you on your path to applying to medical school. So what can I do for you today? Yes. So what I had written in about was about the programs, the MD-PhD programs and just the ex expectations from these programs. So I am currently a senior in college at the University of New Hampshire. And I have finished all of my prereqs and I did my first research experience this summer at Boston Children's Hospital and I absolutely loved it so much so that I had always been on the pre-med track and then I was like, wait, but I, <laughs> I can relate research to what I do in volunteering and I can make some sort of connection and I want to do both. Yep. <laughs> so I started looking into MD, PhD programs. And just one summer is definitely not enough research. My GPA is not um, really at that competitive range. So I decided I'm going to apply to get my master's in a research heavy, like molecular and cellular biology program. Okay. So right now I'm sending out some applications to like University of Connecticut, um, Vanderbilt. Some, a lot, most of the schools have med schools and they work um, together for these programs mm -hmm. in order to boost my GPA, which is currently a three, four and get some more research experience. Cause I only have that one summer. Okay. So I'm just, I was looking at all the stats and you get worried thinking, Oh, these students have <laughs> three sixteen average GPA. A, I mean, an, at three, a uh, five sixteen average MCAT. That's what I meant to say. Yep. A 3.7 to 3.85 GPA and over 4,000 hours in the lab. Yep. So I'm just like, this is what I want to do, but I feel yeah. like the stats are just so, so like yeah. selective. So let's start with, I, I love this question. I love talking about MD, PhD because most students don't want to do MD, PhD. They just want to be involved in research in some way. So Let's talk about what you envision your career being like in 20 years. How often are you seeing patients? How often are you doing, doing research? Are you an academic center? Are you kind of in the community? What do you potentially envision your life being like? So ideally, what I would like to have is, I didn't see this from my PI at Children's, but a lot of the principal investigators would be they would practice in the hospital like two or three days a week and then they would be in the lab a couple days a week mm -hmm. and they would just sort of use their clinical insights with their research and I thought that that was really just really interesting yeah. and really important when it comes to developing treatments and everything yeah do you know let me stop you there do you know if those PIs were MD PhD students or did they just have a PhD or just have an MD? Obviously the ones that we're seeing patients are, are MDs where, do you know if they were quote unquote, just MDs? Did they have their PhDs? And do you know if they went to a dual degree program? I don't know about their program. I just know that a lot of them, I only know from like looking at their name, their label MD PhD that they okay. would and that, that from talking to other students in the internship program that they would talk about their PIs who do both. And I was like, yeah. wow, I didn't okay. even know that was a thing. Yeah. And and they, they likely are MD, PhD, like dual degree uh, students or former students, graduates, mm -hmm. et cetera. Okay. Uh, okay. So keep, keep going. Yeah. So I just thought it was, I really liked the, I had listened to your podcast uh, um, you had the director of UT San Antonio MD PhD come in yep. a couple years ago, and he was just talking about how it was more just those deep understandings of the biological processes you learn in medical school, and like discovering the different aspects of them. Mm -hmm. So that's what I really liked about research. That's what I found really cool. So I would like to somehow incorporate that into my career, and this is the program that I thought would work best, but. Yeah. 
there's also MDs that do research and there's. Yeah. So yeah. I had, I had on the podcast, uh, Dr. Maureen Leonard, who is quote unquote, just an MD, right? She was in my, my class in medical school and she, <laughs> she does research four days out of the week and is a huge researcher travels all over the world, giving talks on her research and everything that she's doing for celiac and the microbiome and, mm -hmm. and so much more. And so at, at the end of the day, the question is ultimately, do you see yourself doing more research than not? Right. M Maureen, Dr. Leonard is uh, kind of, She's not an exception, but she found her passion in research at some point, and yeah. she's making a career for herself mm -hmm. as, quote unquote, just an MD. Now, she's gone back and got her master's in some sort of specialized kind of scientific uh, research-oriented degree. I should probably know what her degree is. Uh, it was mm -hmm. funny. We were actually just hanging out this past weekend as we're recording this. Um, uh, but... Ultimately, the, the students who are very strong candidates for MD-PhD programs are those who know that they just love research and they've done a ton of research and they have usually found something that they want to research already. And it's not just, ooh, I like research and want to integrate this into my practice because you can do that as an MD and getting yeah. into an MD program is probably going to be easier than an MD PhD program, especially with maybe a little bit less stellar stats, especially with not a ton of research hours or any sort of publications yeah. or anything like that. And I think a lot of students are made aware of this research thing. They go, oh, I, I, I know that the, the importance of research and integrating that into my clinical care and translational research and all this stuff, I, I want to do that. Therefore, I have to go to an MD PhD program. And this is just not the case. Again, yeah. it's it's for those just super research heavy students who who know what they want to study. They they they're just super interested in it, super passionate about it. And the patients, oh yeah, I'll see some patients too, I guess, on the side. But research, 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 and let me help the patients through that. Mostly, mm -hmm. the the other thing that students get get a little bit swayed by is the fact that school is typically free and you get a stipend. And so a lot of students will go. Oh, I dip my toes in the research world. I have a summer of research and oh, I can get free medical school. Sweet, I'm going to apply MD PhD. And again, that's just not the reason to apply to an MD PhD program. No, it definitely is not because <laughs> they're they're not easy to get into. No. <laughs> um yes, I I think personally I'm really excited. I'm in the phase where I'm just very excited about research and I would like to have my GPA up past the three five mark. Um, I plan I'm planning to apply for fall 2022. So not this June, but the mm -hmm. next June. So that would be after one year in a master's program. Okay. So we'll see after another year of research, if I become the research oriented student who knows exactly what they want to study, or if I'm still more, I'd like to integrate this into patient care yeah. and seeing where that track leads me because it's it's hard to navigate when you only have one summer, but you're interested in something, but it's you don't know you don't yeah. know where like where the line is for the app the applicants and what everyone else is where everyone else is where everyone who's just who wants to do and um, research as an MD lies as well. So yeah. it's interesting to think about. So so step one, don't worry about everyone else. Only worry <laughs> about yourself. Right? You you are running your own race. Everyone else is running their own race, and you're just mm -hmm. all doing your thing. So don't don't try to play the 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 comparison game because you'll yeah. you'll always lose. Um, the other thing you you mentioned GPA a couple times. You said your GPA is kind of three point four ish. What are the trends in that? Do you know? Um. I started off pretty low and then I got like, I think I started off in college. I had like a 2.7 my first mm. semester. And then I, I got up to like the low threes and last semester I got almost all A's. I got one B okay. and I'm hoping to get all A's this semester. Okay. And then my plans to take the MCAT in August. Okay. Are you graduating this semester? Yeah, I am. Okay. My plan is to take the MCAT in August and go back to my internship and work part-time and study part-time. Okay. And then hopefully in the fall, start a master's program. Okay. 
It sounds like a plan. I, I think with your GPA where it is with the strong upward trend, I don't think you need a master's if you were just applying to, to medical school. Mm-hmm. Um, you've shown a, a great upward trend. It's a very common issue to start college poorly, uh, mm-hmm. but you've shown that you've recovered. So a master's isn't necessarily uh, something that you have to do, but I, I think it's a good path for you because you had this exposure at mm-hmm. Children's, and you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. And you're what you're ultimately doing is, yeah, you're improving your GPA potentially through this master's program. But what you're also doing is you're basically kind of like shadowing physician, right? The purpose of shadowing a physician is to see, do, do you really like medicine? Do you really like what mm-hmm. the doctor does all day? And what you're doing is you're going to take a year and do some more research and go, do I really like this? Do I, yeah, do exactly. I want to do this more? Then some other things, and should I apply MD PhD or just MD and just do as much research as I want on the back end? So I, I think it's a, a solid plan for that purpose, right? Just exploring w- yeah. whether or not this is the right path for you, uh, PhD wise. Also, for me, I just feel like I kind of just want another more just general scientific knowledge almost. Like I'm just more I'm curious before I enter med school. <laughs> Do you I like want- science and want to help people? <laughs> <laughs> That's like on that little pre-med, they said pre-med S is like the first thing. I like science and I want to help people. Yep. <laughs> but I, I do want some more scientific education. Yeah. Um, just, I feel like I need to improve my study skills and everything. Okay. And I think it would be, a better track for me just to go ahead and use it kind of as a decision period too. Yeah. thinking about where should I, what should I do? Okay. So as you're going through this process, don't, don't forget to, or don't neglect the rest of the application, right? The, the shadowing, mm-hmm. the clinical experience, all that fun stuff. Don't neglect yeah, I the, have, those parts I volunteer of it. weekly at a hospital. I'm hoping I've, I've done 70 hours now. So hopefully 200 by the time I graduate. And then um, I also work in a nursing home. Great. So I have that, but I need to do, I'm going to shadow a little bit more where I volunteer. So. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Do you have any other, any, any other questions? I don't know if I really answered your question or answered I a question. I think you did. I think it, it's more just you have to do the amount of research to know for sure yep. that – you want to do an MD PhD. Yeah. And remember part of the application for MD PhDs is you have a whole separate PhD essay, right? 10,000 character PhD essay. That's like, tell me why you want to do research. And so that's, that's a no joke essay. Um, it, it, that's not literally the prompt. I forget what the, the specific prompt is, but it's, it's about, it's, you have to know this very, very specific details of your research. Yeah. I could, say for the most part what I did this summer this past summer and hopefully what I'll follow through with doing this coming up summer but it's it's still you they want to see that independent independent critical thinking yep. that you can develop a hypothesis and you know how to test it you got it so it's not just you know I've done <laughs> I have 150 <laughs> hours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did 100,000 hours. That's yes. how it feels like. Yeah. And one of the, the other biggest differences, just kind of to complete the thought of the, the PhD or MD, PhD, dual degree program is the interview process is typically a two-day process versus one day. One day with the, the researchers interviewing with the researchers for the PhD side of it, and then one day for the medical school interview. Yeah. And there's also um, some schools – you apply into the MD program and then you can later on apply into the yep. MD PhD if you decide yep. you want to do research. Then there's like um, Oregon Health Sciences does. If you s- submit your application to the MD PhD and then you get denied, they send your application to the MD and you get looked at for that. Yep. Where a lot of schools you have to pick which one. So it just depends. Yep. You've done your research. That's good. Yes, I have. I'm just looking, I'm working on my personal statements for my master's program, then trying to just figure out a, I've been listening, listening to the MCAT podcast because I have the books, but I yep. haven't figured out my study schedule for the summer yet. So okay. I kind of want to figure that out. Okay. How am I going to approach this beast? This beast of a test. <laughs> well, what other questions do you have that I can answer for you? Um, let me think. I have some more. 
Do you listen to the MCAT Cars podcast as well? Yes, I do. Good. I've been like dabbling in them, but I haven't been like fully committed yet because I'm not fully committed to my studying for the MCAT until the summer because I can't, it's too much to balance right now. Yep. Got it. Oh, here's another question. It's off topic. But what are your thoughts? So if I'm going in, I actually have over a hundred hours so I can shadow any physician in the hospital. I okay. volunteer. How do I go about picking like what, like which areas to look into? Like, how do I kind of get a glimpse of them all from shadowing? So I, I don't think it's really possible to get a glimpse of, uh, yeah. of them all. There's just so many. Um, but I, I think if you aren't, aren't kind of, cutting off surgery, which is typically what most people cut off first. They're like, I just, I don't like the OR. I don't want to be there. Uh, and they just get rid of surgery right off the bat. If you're not even at that point, I would try to, um, try to shadow a general surgeon and Mm -hmm. try to shadow some of the hospitalists, uh, and, and get a good glimpse of what the surgical world looks like, what the medicine world looks like. And then as you go through that process, as you, as you hopefully see some, general surgeries there's there's a surgery on the belly and you're like oh that's cool let me dive a little bit deeper and you go and you shadow um a, a colorectal surgeon or just just going down that thought process i don't think mm-hmm. there's there's a right or wrong way um to go through the shadowing process um some some advisors will tell you that you should shadow lots of primary care to show that you're interested in primary care so that schools that you apply to that are primary care focused are like oh look she shadowed lots of primary care i don't i don't necessarily think that students should play that game i think you should just go explore what you're interested in exploring and and make the most of it do you know if they ever allow people to shadow medical students what would the point of shadowing a medical student be? Just to see <laughs> see how many like, tears they shed in a day. <laughs> <laughs> see how many see um like the learning process and everything. Yeah, no, it's it's not a common thing. Um, potentially, what you could do is uh, at medical schools that have open houses, they'll typically mm-hmm. let students come in and kind of ask questions and see what's going on and ask questions of students. But to 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 sh- <laughs> excuse me to shadow a medical student um, probably is is not a thing. I think you could, if you have a friend who is a medical student, you could go hang out with them and yeah, as like, they're oh, studying. Yeah. Um, but you probably yeah. wouldn't be allowed on campus typically. Yeah, yeah. My cousin is. Um, a, she's at Pacific Northwest. Northwest yeah. getting her well she's actually in Boise because she's in her third year okay and she just picked surgery nice so I'll have to t- ask about her shadowing experiences yeah yeah and in the hospital I volunteered just recruited they now have they had now have residents or third and fourth year med students from mm. Tufts nice here so it's cool just to see the the education like what happens while you're becoming a doctor not only the end goal yeah, it's no. a long process. yeah, it's a long process. And I'm glad you mentioned that, right? A lot of students are only focused on that end goal and they're miserable the rest of the time. So I like that you're interested in, in every step of the process, which will hopefully keep you more engaged and happier and, and not burnt out, et cetera, through this yeah, process. Yeah, I think it's important that I, I'm someone I like, I like studying. <laughs> I yeah. like, I like learning and everything. And I know everyone says that he wants to go to med school, but I think that is really important because it's a, it's a lot of doing that, especially the first two years. So yeah. well, cool. Any other questions? I think that's about it. All right. Well, good luck. I hope you figure out your you. path and your journey through your master's program and yeah. uh, keep us updated on your progress. Thank you.